Hello and welcome to the presentation on how LoRaWAN helps with recovery of koalas after wildfires in Australia. My name is Tomas Shukle and I'm your host at today's presentation. I am a CEO and co-founder of the company SenseEdge. At SenseEdge, we are devoted to developing innovative, sustainable and also open IoT solutions. And as always for us, it starts with DTN. Last year, we were at a conference in South Australia, um, in Adelaide, when the fires in Australia just started. And we were talking to our partners, Open Sensing, how can we address this? And the idea evolved and um, came at its best uh, in Amsterdam this year, in January when we were discussing about wildlife back in the, at the Kangaroo Island, uh, when uh, the impact of fires was the greatest. And those koalas there were thirsty, uh, and also wildlife in general. So people were trying to help them in a ways uh, they could come across. So uh, here is an example of koala water station, a DIY um, koala water station that was um, deployed around Kangaroo Island. But the problem with uh, this device was that uh, these tanks get empty and nobody really knows when. So they put a lot of effort and time to go around to check whether the water is inside or not. Uh, so they wanted to make these devices smarter by uh, monitor water levels within it. So our partners actually tried to find a solution, but at the time, no solution fitted uh, the use case. Uh, so they presented us with the problem and we said, okay, that is quite interesting. So let's go for it. And in two and a half months time, uh, we built a uh, water sense, LoRa, LoRa one uh, water level sensor that we have here on the right hand side. Uh, it's very compact, it's shy of 80 millimeters in diameter and it's installed on the top of lid and measures uh, water level. So a bit, of more a bit more information on the sensor. So it uses uh, laser time of flight uh, sensor, uh, it measures up to two and a half meters. Uh, we put a lot of effort so it measures correctly in uh, very narrow pipes down to 80 millimeters. Uh, and it's sending data both periodically and upon movement, which is really desirable feature since it gives better information on the utilization of the water tanks and maybe better planning of those uh, the deployment of those tanks in the future. It uses two triple A batteries. Uh, it should last up to five years based on the measurements in the lab. Uh, and uh, we already talked about is its compact shape. So these devices that we have here on the right hand side are being deployed on a kangaroo island as we speak. And what is interesting about this um, project is it opened the horizon of new options for deployments uh, that we are taking and making in the future. So one of them being virtual dam project that addresses the problem of urban flooding during storms in, um, in winter time in Australia. So the water scarcity is a problem in Australia. However, uh, when it rains, it pours. So idea here is to utilize these water, rainwater tanks that we have here on the right hand side uh, in bulk. So a lot of these tanks, around 1000 of those tanks, as a buffer for this uh, rainwater and then release it with some delay. Uh, for that, we need to measure, monitor, and control uh, the level of water within this tank that we're going to do with water set sensor. And by that, we can reduce peak uh, by 35 to 85%. Besides this uh, use case, what is interesting is also using water level sensors in water tanks for bushfire protection in Australia. So on the left hand side, we have here an uh, example of this, that kind of tank. And the problem with, um, with wildfires was that a lot of help from other countries came, a lot of firemen came to help put out fires, but there was no, um, there was lack of um, having 
idea how much water is left within these tanks, so logistic was not organized, thus the water depleted. The other case is um, uh, measuring water levels in uh, drainage pipes for landslide protection in Austria. So this job is now done by hand with regular scheduled examinations going around and checking this and uh, the aim of the project is to digitalize this. So the question is with all these use cases what to do where there is no traditional LoRa one coverage? How, how can we measure such or enable such use cases there. The idea here was that we extend water sense sensor with satellite connectivity. And for that, we have developed a water sense lacuna together with partners uh, Lacuna Space and IRNAS. Here are some specifications of the sensor. So the sensor itself, uh, it's uh, water sense as I presented before, but it uses Lacuna Space antenna and earnest modem. So together, it's a bit bulkier, it's a bit bigger, but then again, it has the same functionality and can works. It can work within the LoRaWAN connectivity area or yeah, in the middle of nowhere. So uh, as it is for SenseTIC, uh, we have developed this sensor through use cases. Uh, and now it's a full production certified sensor on the market and the same path awaits water sense. So now we are, have some concrete use cases, interesting use cases, and by the end of the year, it's gonna be developed a sense pack with a regidized uh, uh, casing and being certified and ready for the market. So to conclude with a call to action, we would like you to help us, uh, to, help us uh, to establish this preservation for wildlife for koalas, so you can make your own contraptions for water tanks and also make them smart with water sense sensors. Uh, follow us uh, on the social media regarding the uh, how the project is going, what are the results. Uh, we'll be posting there all the results and information. Stay tuned. Thank you.